This is Twilight Imperium. You play one of 17 races, which all have their own special abilities, ship statistics, and lore. Lots of lore. The object of the game is to be the first player to move your counter to the end of the score track. You score points by completing these objectives. You start the game with two revealed, and then one new objective gets revealed at each turn. These objectives decide how you should be playing the game, and it's going to be different every time because these cards are random. I picked five out of a whole deck. They're not all military objectives, like for instance this one says control six planets. Pretty military, but this one is just own two technologies. You don't need to be military at all in order to do that. So the game is very different every time. Each player also starts the game with a secret objective card, which is an objective that only they have and know about. There are other objective victory points you can get. For instance, if you're the first player to make it to the center tile and spend six influence, you get this token, which is worth a victory point. Also, controlling the middle like that is also a good way of gaining victory points each turn, which encourages people to fight for the middle, which is fun. The structure of the game basically works like this. You have four phases that you have to go through. In each phase, you go around the table. And in those rounds, each player gets a turn. So turns are in rounds and rounds are in phases. You start off with the strategy phase. Let's go see what that is. The strategy phase is when each player picks these cards. You start off with the speaker and take turns picking a card. What these are, are strategy actions. Basically, whoever takes technology, for instance, gets to do the technology action when the action phase will come up. Everybody else gets to do the secondary technology. So basically, you pick which of these is more important for you for your turn, and you try and get it if you can, maybe negotiating with other players to do so. Next is the action phase. This is the meat and potatoes of the games. This is where you will be taking your actions when it's your turn. You can either take a strategic action, that means playing your strategy card, or you can take a component action, that means doing an action described on one of your other cards, or taking a tactical action, which is all about moving and attacking and invading, and let's go take a quick look at that. So let's say it's green turn, and green wants to take a tactical action. In order to do so, he needs to spend a tactical point. So over here, where you see that it says tactic, you take one of those points, and you go place this counter on the system where you want to do something. So let's say I want to move into this system, then I put my token there, and I move my stuff into that system. On a later turn, if I want to then move into here, if a ship is in a system that it has already been activated, it's stuck there, it can't do anything anymore. So if I wanted to go here, I could only bring these. Now I'm also breaking some rules doing, here, doing this, but I'm just trying to get you to understand the basics. So since I said combat was a thing you can do in the tactical action, let's take a quick look at how that works. This is just the basic gist. So basically, if I want to attack this guy here by moving some ships there, I first need to activate the system by putting that counter on there, saying that's where I'm going. And he has a ship here, so I'm going to have to bring some ships to try and help with my attack. This is a carrier, this is a cruiser. And the carrier can't really, is not really good at attacking by himself. He's really more to carry units over. So let's bring some units there. And let's bring some fighters as well. Now basically what I'm going to be doing is rolling some dice to see if we get high enough to kill the guy. And the defenders are also going to be rolling dice to see if they get high enough to kill us. This sheet is where you see all your combat statistics. So you can see the carrier needs to roll a 9 or better to kill. Whereas the enemy's destroyer only needs, also needs to roll a 9 or better. Fighters also 9 or better. Ooh, look at this. The infantry only needs to roll 8 or better. But they can't shoot in space. They need to land. Let's go talk about that. Alright, so let's say I rolled the dice better than this and managed to kill the ships. Now, what I can do is the invasion step where I bring my units down on the planet and then these guys fight by, you guessed it, rolling dice. Let's say I win, you're dead. I now control this planet, yay. What does it do to have a planet control? See these numbers here? Ooh, these are resources. 
resource and influence resource and influence by taking over a planet i now have access to those resources which brings us to the last phase of the tactical action production we did activation movement says combat invasion now we get to produce stuff build stuff and this this familiar card is also where you find how much it costs to build the stuff you want to build so you use your planet's resources to build these things now you can only build where you have a space dock which is one of these guys here so only on this planet get off and once everybody has done these and can't do any more either because they've already used their strategy or they don't have any component actions or they don't have any tokens to activate systems anymore then everybody passes and we move on to the status phase status phase is where we take care of the bureaucracy the paperwork first thing we'll do is score objectives that's where everybody looks at what the objectives are and says hey i can do that and then they put one of their counters on it boom and score a point oh geez don't cheat cheating's bad then we reveal new objectives so one of those cards we just saw we flip a new one to see what it is then everybody draws action cards i guess we should talk about what those are these are what the back of the action cards look like this is what they do basically you'll have some of these in your hand from time to time and you just do what it says on the card then we remove command tokens from the board so that's when you take the command tokens that you put on the board to activate systems and you take them off and they go in your reinforcement pile so they don't go back on your tactics phase speaking of which next up is gain and redistribute command tokens at this stage of the status phase everybody can take two of these add them to their board and they can redistribute all of these however they want next up we got a ready cards dang i forgot to explain what an exhausted card was <sighs> okay let's do that quickly these are the cards you get when you control a planet right so i control these two planets if i want to use these resources i have to exhaust a card and i do that simply by turning it over showing that its resources have been used and now i can buy my cruiser so when i get to the status phase and i need to reset my cards all that means is i put them back like this so you get your resources back and then we repair units so some ships don't actually die when they get hit for instance dreadnoughts have sustained damage that means they can take a hit without dying you just turn them over on the board this is a dreadnought it gets hit instead of dying it will instead just flip over to show that it is it has sustained damage and at the end of the turn it gets repaired and comes back with its full life next is return strategy cards remember these things well basically once we're done the round we put those back and we're going to go through another round of picking them again at the start of the next round and that's the end of the turn wait a minute what's this thing we didn't talk about agendas so once somebody takes over this planet mechadol rex the capital in the middle for the first time and takes this away that means the agenda phase now happens at the end of every turn but what's an agenda phase well i'll give you a hint this is the capital where the government is Ooh. so during the agenda phase all the players meet at the capital well they don't actually bring a unit here and we'll have these agenda cards which are propositions that need to be voted at the council so now you all got to discuss together whether you want to vote yes or no and it'll change the game now this is a directive this is a one-time thing but you can also have laws which permanently change the rules of the game so that's pretty cool but how does the voting work does everybody just get one vote no so that's where these influence points on each of the planets come in play they basically represent the political power of each planet so here i have five influence which means i get five votes during the agenda phase now there are two other really important aspects of the game which aren't really mentioned in the turn order that I was going over because they mostly happen during these strategy actions um, are trade and technology. So let's go over those really quick. Technology lets you research a technology and spend resources to research more technology. So what's technology? Well each player has this deck of technology cards 
which are potential technologies you can research for your race. And what does this do? Just to give you an example, during the status phase, draw two cards instead of one, two action cards. So this technology lets you get one more action card every turn. So each of these te technologies will give you special abilities or sometimes they're better ships. So you can upgrade your ships with technology research as well. So that's a big part of the game. And every race also has some of these custom technologies that only they can get. All right, now let's talk about trading. So it says here, gain three, three trade goods. Sorry, I'm a French man and I can never count to four because there's always a tree in the way. Anyways, trade, um, you gain three trade goods and you can replenish commodities. What's that all about? So the commodities are on your card here. Now what do these do? Well, basically for you, they do nothing, but they might be very useful to other races. So what you can do is you can trade these to other people and whenever you trade a commodity to another player, it becomes a trade good. You'll want to do this as an actual trade, right? So you're giving them, you're giving him a commodity, he gives you trade goods as well, or he gives you cards. Commodities don't do anything for you, but they let you trade with people. Now, trade goods, that's a different story. These little buddies are equivalent to a planet resource or a point of influence. If you run out of your planets, your planets are all exhausted, you can then use these to pay for your stuff instead. So that trading is a very important part of the game and you're going to be trading at all times during the whole game. You also have these promissory notes, which you can also use to trade away. Give me money and I'll give you a ceasefire that you can turn in whenever you want at a later part of the game. And I mean, that's pretty much it. That's Twilight Imperium. And you just keep doing all of this stuff that I explain over and over again. I mean, obviously there are much more details than this in the rules. So make sure that somebody around the table has read all of the rules document and uh, has a reference. But, uh, you know, now you get the gist of it. Have fun.